Okay, guys. Uh, so for this week, we are going to model our vehicles. So I say vehicle and not car because you can choose uh, with anything that has four rubber tires, at least four rubber tires. So basically no motorcycles. Uh, you could do a military vehicle. If, uh, I think like a half track has four rubber tires plus a uh, track in the back. Um, so you can get creative there. The other rule is that it has to be a car or a vehicle that they made more than five of, all right? <laughs> so I, the reason for that is I don't want you to do some crazy one-off something. Um, you could, though, I will make an exception. If you want to present to me a one-off car or vehicle that you want to model, I'm just going to analyze it, and if it's too hard, I'm going to just caution you strongly against that. I never stop anyone from doing what they want to do. Um, but based, I kind of know you guys' abilities by this point, and I would definitely give you a strong recommendation to either do it or not do it uh, based on what I see. So it's not hard and firm. The only thing that is hard and firm is it does have to have four rubber tires. Okay, so good places to go for reference for anything really. A uh, good website is called the dash blueprints dot com. If it ever loads, and if I get the web address right. I think that's right. Yep. Uh, this site's really kind of incredible, the amount of uh, blueprints that they have on here for like pretty much every production vehicle ever made. They've got military stuff. They have all sorts of stuff. You can play around with it. The one thing I caution you if you're going to use anything from this site is that you read the reviews on the material and f make sure that the drawings are to scale and that they're actually um, mathematically correct in terms of shape and proportion from view to view to view. Because the reason I say that is because a lot of the drawings on here are not. And what will happen is you'll pick one of these views where it's got the side, front, top, and you'll start modeling the vehicle and you'll find out that nothing lines up and it's because it was hand drawn by somebody and it's not actually a mechanical drawing. Um, so you can technically model from that, but it will be a lot harder. It'll take you a lot longer than if you do use drawings that are actually uh, mathematically correct in our um, plan drawings, all right? So I believe you can find that information if you just read. I don't, I don't remember where it is, but somewhere in, in here they'll, uh, you can find out, they'll tell you whether it's, dis uh, I forgot the terms they use, but they'll tell you whether it's accurate or not. And you definitely want to pick the ones that are accurate, okay? Another place, my favorite of all times, is Google Images. And so for the car that I want to do for you guys during lecture, we had to pick something that's kind of simple. We are going to do the Bronco concept vehicle. And uh, the teacher can break the rules. They only made one of these. But um, that's okay because it's actually a fairly simplistic model. So what I do when I'm uh, grabbing imagery for uh, model modeling a car or vehicle, is I just start grabbing views that are basically pertinent to the overall structure. So three-quarter views are great because these aren't necessarily what you're going to use as modeling reference, but they're good for kind of figuring out what's going on in between the spaces, as you'll see once we start modeling this. So I'd probably grab that one. It looks pretty good. I uh, actually grabbed all of these when I did do this. Um, this one is really good because a lot of times if you get car reference from a photograph, it's hard to tell what's going on on top. So this one is awesome because you can actually see uh, what's happening on the top of the vehicle. I usually go in and I'll grab uh, features. So for example, this winch here in the front, you definitely, if you're going to model that, want to know how that's all put together. So you grab that kind of stuff. What else? Um, I'll grab stuff I'm not even going to model. So in this class, we're not going to model the interior. But, um, you know, once you start modeling for a while and you're, you're working in 3D, projects can, you know, you can work on it one year and then come back and do it another year. or Even five years later, you can come back and redo something. So what I like to do is I like to grab all my reference material 
at the time I'm doing it so that if I come back to that project, say a couple years later, uh, I want to make sure that um, the reference art is still available. And sometimes this stuff disappears on the internet and you can't get it again. So I grab this, details like the interior, close-ups. For you guys though, we're not doing any interior whatsoever. We're just going to um, model the exterior. And please don't tell me Google's going to. Great. So I'm going to go back to Google Images. Taco Concept. And I just basically, I kind of over grab stuff. Now the important images that you guys need for your reference for modeling are basically the front. So this is a good front view here. The side, this is not a good side view. You see how that one's kind of turned a little bit like a 30 degree angle? That's no good. This one is directly straight on front. That one's perfect. This is not good. Again, it's turned about 30 degrees. This one is absolutely perfect for a back view. And then this one is absolutely perfect for a side view. So at a minimum, you're going to need the front, back, and side. And what you're looking for is you don't want the photograph to have a lot of perspective on it. And the way you can tell that is basically by the foreshortening that's going on in the frame. So for example, if I'm looking at this image, and please don't crash. Uh, it's not going to work. Uh, if I'm looking at this image and you look at the tires here, the front, the tires that are more, most in the foreground, and you can see just a little bit of the front tires peeking out behind it, that means that that image doesn't have a whole lot of perspective on it, and it was probably shot with a long lens, so a, more of a telephoto lens. This is the kind of image you're looking for. So this one doesn't have much perspective, so I'm going to grab that one. This one also, if I look through the window here, that interior shape there is the other window on the other side and that's really not a whole lot of perspective on that image also so I'm going to use this one and then I'm going to look at let's see here my oh that's my back and then I got my front here same thing there's just a little bit of the back tires peeking out so this image doesn't have a whole lot of perspective either all right so what I did was I went in here and I downloaded all these pictures And then you guys want to go to the Kong and copy this folder. It's in the uh, courses. Joel H. Thornton, uh, Hard Surface and Organic Modeling, Ref, Lecture 7. And um, just grab this scenes file. It's the HSOM Lecture 7 car setup and you can grab the scenes out of there and that's got all the reference images that I'm about to use. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that to my desktop. Okay, and now that's copied to my desktop. I'm going to go into this folder, and we can see here that I've got all the reference shots that I told you I was going to get. I got a close up of the tire. I got my back. I got a bunch of my scene files because I've already built this thing three times. Um, all my different reference shots. I've got the uh, poles for the door. I've got the uh, reflect reflectors in the back, turn signals got close-ups of the headlamp and the fog lights. Pretty much everything I'm going to need to model I have pictures of and then some. Got features of the door hinges on the outside of the car, the rim, all of this. For now though we're going to concentrate on just three images and that's going to be the front, the side, and the back. So I'm going to go find those images here in my folder. There's my front, so I'm going to select it. There's my side, so I'm going to select it. And then my front is up here somewhere. There it is. So I have all of those images selected. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to Photoshop. And what I'm trying to do is I'm, I want to get my scene set up ahead of time. 
so that my modeling is uh, an easy affair as opposed to a hard one. So I'm going to open up Photoshop uh, CS6. I'm going to copy, I'm just going to drag all my images into Photoshop. I'm going to create a new image. I'm going to make it 2048 by 2048. And then I'm going to copy each one of these. So I'm going to go to the front here, Control C. Go to my new picture, Control V. And then I'm going to go to my back, Control A, Control C. Go to my new image, Control V. And then my side view, Control A, Control C for copy and then copy this into my new image. Now I can delete these or close these other images because I don't lo no longer need these. And so what I have here is I've got a new image which is completely square, 2048 by 2048, and it's got one, two, three layers in here. We've got front, back, and side view. So what I usually like to do if I'm setting up reference for a car is I want to start with a key view. In this case, it's the, probably the best one to use is the side view. And I'm going to hit Control T for the multi manipulator. And I'm going to hold down the Shift and Control keys to scale it uniform so that I don't distort the image in any way. And then I'm going to just go ahead and try to have it go ahead and fill up the entire frame. And I'm going to hit the V key and I'm going to just move it to try to center it up in the frame as much as possible. And now I'm going to create a new layer over here. So I'm going to create a new layer. And in this layer, I want to grab my paintbrush. And I'm going to change the color to something obnoxious like red. And I'm going to hold down the shift key and just draw a big old straight line all the way across. Oops. And what I'm going to do with this now, I'm going to hold the V key so I can move it. I'm going to use this as kind of a planar stick to see if my vehicle is actually straightened or if the camera that took the picture was skewed in any way. So the best way to check that is we can assume that the ground is flat, correct? So if the ground is flat and it looks like it is and the tires are both touching the tip of that red line then that picture is actually oriented correctly. But you can get thrown by this because if I move my line up, see what happens here? There's a subtle slope in the car and so if you didn't zero your plane based on where the wheels were, you could easily zero the image based on the slope of the car and you'd end up with the car flat but the tires skewed and you would actually end up uh, missing a detail in the vehicle which is this vehicle actually kind of slopes somewhat so from the front of the vehicle here to the back it actually rises it looks like about two or three inches All right. so we can tell that though because the wheels are 100% flat so this image is good to go. It's flat. That thing's oriented perfectly flat on the ground. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go in and grab my other images. And I'll just do the, uh, I want to do the front view first. So I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to drag it up to be above the side view. And then I'm going to turn its opacity down to like say something around 50%. And then I'm going to hit the control T again for the uh, multi tool here. And I'm going to go ahead and I want to line up the roof here at the front of the vehicle. And I'm going to drag this little center. It's kind of like the same as the uh, pivot point in Maya. So I'm going to grab that little center point and put it there. And now what happens is whenever I scale, I scale from that point And I lined up my roof line with the roof line on the front of the view. Okay. And so what I'm trying to do here now is I'm trying to get the tires flat to the ground. And I'm checking all my shapes to make sure that they line up. So in this case, I have some key shapes. I've got the rear view mirror, and it's kind of lining up with the rear view mirror on the side. I have this little bevel shape, which is kind of lining up. I can then drag the image over to see if uh, other elements are lining up, like the fender. So the fender's a little high, and so is the rear view mirror. So that tells me that I need to scale this thing down a little bit. And then if I go over here, the fender is absolutely flush with the fender on the side. The rear view or the side view mirror is flush with the side view mirror. The roof line is flush with the side of the roof line. And it looks roughly to be about the undercarriage is about the same height 
as the undercarriage in the side view. So I think I've got that lined up pretty well. And I'm going to go ahead and double click to commit the changes. At this point, I can go ahead and turn the opacity all the way back up. And I've got this image lined up and scaled to my side image so that I know when I bring this into Maya, everything's going to line up and I'm kind of removing a lot of the guesswork ahead of time. So I can go ahead and hide that side view. Again, that you don't have to worry about things like this where the tires are slightly below the, the red line. That's okay because these two images were both shot with completely different lenses and so it's never going to line up 100%. What I did was I lined up the important things which are the body elements and then I kind of let the tires go to the wayside because I'm going to choose the side view for how to place those. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and drag the back view up over the top of this, the front view. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn the opacity down to somewhere around 50%. And then I'm going to go ahead and... Um, actually, I jumped the gun here. I'm going to turn the opacity back up. I first need to determine whether or not this image is skewed or not, or whether it's flat to the ground. So I can tell here this tire is flat to the red line, but this tire is rising up a little bit from it. So I think my camera, whoever shot this, kind of had a little slight axis turn on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compensate for that by holding down Control T. And I'm going to just go ahead and rotate this a bit so that both of my tires are flat to the red line. And then I'm going to double click to commit the change. And then now I can check using my red line, just move that up and down, and see if this thing is flat compared to the body panels. So I'm just going to compare it to a few of the, looks like it's relatively good. Uh, I'll accept that. That looks good. I've basically zeroed that out. So I'm going to undo that. And now I'm going to turn the opacity down around 50%. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. Control T. And I'm going to line this one up with the back because this is the back. And remember there was a slight slope to our vehicle from front to back. So this image, because it's the very back, I'm going to line up to the roof line of the very back of the car. So corner to corner. And then I'm going to grab that pivot point and I'm going to put it right up there at that corner. And I'm going to hold down the control and shift keys. And then I'm going to try to this time line up the side view mirror with the side view mirror. Same thing as I did before. And this one's not quite working out as well. And I believe the reason for that is because those side view mirrors are way up at the front of the car. And my, what I'm looking at is at the back of the car. So therefore, those mirrors are about five feet in front of the back of the car. So there's going to be some perspective on those that's going to foreshorten them and make them seem smaller than they are. So I'm going to disregard those, and I'm going to actually follow the uh, key shapes, which are the roof line from the back, the bevel here on the back of the car, and the bevel here. So those are lining up. And then we can see here, we can see the hint of the uh, rear turn signal. And that looks like that's lining up. And then the, probably the most important thing is the top of the fender. So the top of the fender here and the top of the fender here. Are they lining up? And that's pretty darn close. I might go up a little bit higher. And check it out. The tires actually balance. Uh, it's, at a certain point, there's a diminishing return on how hard you can tweak this. So you just kind of have to average the distance. They're never going to line up 100%. So I'm going to say, yes, I have this pretty close to lined up. And I'm going to double click to accept the changes. And then I'm going to center this uh, image up on the center of the frame. Turn the opacity back to 100%. Now I can hide my red line. I can hide my rear view. And I'm going to go ahead and just save these in the sequence that we created them. So I'm going to do uh, Control Shift S for save a copy. I'm going to say save copy. And I want to go ahead and save this to a new folder. So I'm going to just create a temp folder here on the desktop. And I'm going to save these as a JPEG because I'm not using these as a texture map. So it doesn't matter if there's any compression on this image. And because they're reference images, I kind of want them to be as light as possible. And JPEG is going to make the kind of the smallest file size, either JPEG or PNG. Uh, I actually like JPEGs for, uh, for photographs like this. So I'm going to save it as a JPEG. I'm going to call this one side underscore ref. And text. 
And then I'm going to make, uh, I'm just going to make it maximum, so no compression or the least amount of compression. Then I'm going to go to the front view, Control Shift S to save a copy. I'm going to say save as a copy, do a JPEG again. This one I'm going to call um, front ref text. Save it. And then I'm going to show the back one and Control Shift S for save a copy. Save as copy. And I'm going to do JPEG. And this one I'm going to call back ref text. and save that out. Okay, so we've got our reference images made. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into uh, Maya and we're going to go into an orthographic viewport. We're going to start with the side here. So I'm going to maximize the side ortho and I'm going to create a polygon primitive plane. I'm going to turn on my grid snapping because I want to snap this exactly to the origin. And then for size, I think I just want to make this like almost 20 by 20, which that looks pretty close to that. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, say OK. Let's see, 20 by 20. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe bigger. Uh, let's make it 100 by 100, because remember, Maya's default units are centimeters. And so um, 100 by 100 is a, is a good amount. If we want to later, uh, we can actually make this to the scale of the vehicle. For now, I'm just going to keep it at 100 by 100 centimeters. Okay, now I'm going to go into perspective view. And I'm going to select my plane. And I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to say assign new material. And for the material type, I want to use Lambert. So I'm going to click Lambert. And then under the Lambert material, I want to rename this first. So I'm going to call this side underscore text. Or I want to put ref in here. Side ref text. And then in order to map a color uh, to this, I have to click on the color channel in this little checker box here. And this is going to allow me to link up a file. And the file is that JPEG that I just made. So I'm going to click on file. And then under here, under file one, I'm going to rename this to side ref underscore color. And I'm going to hit enter to uh, complete that name. And then I'm going to click on the folder here to link to that image. And I just need to navigate to where that image is on my desktop. And if we remember, I saved it to the temp folder. And it's right here, side ref. So I'm going to click that. And then now to confirm that we completed the operation, I'm going to hit the six key and it's going to show right up there in the interface. And if you ever want to see the, the uh, sample, see how this sample comes up with this little kind of gray box and a little arrow? That's telling you that if you want to see a rendered thumbnail of that image, all you have to do is click that box and it'll render it for you. I don't know why they do, just don't render it for you, but you have to click that and then it'll show up. Okay, so we got our first reference plane created. Now if we wanted to uh, we could build this vehicle to scale. So why don't we just do that just to tickle our fancy, right? So what I want to do here is I'm going to go into the side or the graphic viewport. I'm going to turn off the grid. Uh, not quite yet. I'm going to select the uh, side reference image. I'm going to hit the insert key so that I'm going to move the center pivot for my plane here so that that pivot point is down at the the floor level with the tires where the tires are resting and then I'm going to hit the insert. Now I want to move this plane up so that my tires are essentially on the ground plane of my scene. And now I can turn the grid off. And how tall would you say that car is? We can guesstimate here. The car is probably like something like uh, five feet tall would be my guess. So centimeters wise, that's going to be, um, who knows, I forgot what, it, it's 2.54 centimeters to an inch. So five feet is 60 inches. So let's just double it. Um, so this thing is going to be, uh, let's just say 120 centimeters. So if we wanted to do that, we could um, just go ahead and create a measure tool. So I'm going to say create measure tools, distance tool, and I'm going to click here at the tire, 
and then I'm going to click somewhere up here where I think is close to 120 uh, centimeters and then I'm going to grab one of these um, locators here and I'm just going to move the measure tool it says 120 or thereabouts and then I'm going to scale this guy up so that the roof line hits that mark and now we know that we have our car roughly scaled to our scene and I can get rid of that measure tool. All right. Now we're going to take this plane that we've just created and we're going to hit control D to duplicate it and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So just type negative 90 into my channel box. I'm going to pull this thing forward and then can anyone guess what I'm about to do here? Yep, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say assign new material. I'm going to do another Lambert. I'm going to call this one front underscore ref underscore text. And then I'm going to link to a file so I have to go to the color channel and click on the little uh, checker box to make that link. I want to link to a file so I'm going to click on file. It's going to open up. I'm going to change the file name here to something more descriptive. I'm going to call this front underscore ref underscore text. Hit enter to complete that. And oh sorry, uh, I used text and that's why I added text one because I already had a text so I need to call that color. Okay so now that I have that named I'm going to go ahead and click on the folder to link to the image. So I'm going to say front ref text. And now we have our uh, front in there and we already sized it so check this out when I pull it through look at this it's lining up almost perfectly a little bit difference uh, but I can easily fix that in here by just scaling it down and now we got the roof line to line up with the bevel uh, to the side to the fenders and that's pretty darn good don't really have to do anything so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out to the front and now I'm gonna duplicate that control D move it off to the back and can anyone guess what I'm about to do? You bet. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say assign new material and I'm going to assign a Lambert. I'm going to give it a descriptive name. I'm going to call this one back ref underscore text. Hit enter to enter the name and then under the color channel I need to assign a file so I'm going to click on the checker box assign file now I'm going to give that file a descriptive name. I'm going to call it back underscore ref underscore color. And now I'm going to navigate to the file. So we have the back and I'm going to go ahead and double click it to link it. Again, if you want to see the preview, just click that and it'll draw it. I'm going to check it to make sure that it lines up correctly. And isn't that a beautiful thing? It's like perfect. You see what I'm looking at? Here. I'm looking at the roof to the bottom of the window, to the window, to the bevel there, to the fender, and it's all perfectly lined up. So that's uh, really about as good as it gets uh, when you're coming to modeling stuff from a photograph. Okay. And now that I have my scene set up and ready to model, uh, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to create layers for all of these construction planes or these reference planes so that I can hide these or, ref or uh, reference them or template them really fast. So I'm going to select the first one which is going to be my side view. I'm going to click on this little icon which is create a new layer and assign selected objects. So it does exactly what it says. It takes this object and assigns it to a layer so now that I can hide that or unhide that really fast. I'm going to double click on that layer to rename it. I'm going to call it side underscore ref underscore L for layer and then I'm going to select the front one and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to call this one front underscore ref underscore L for layer. I hide that and then I'm going to select the back one and I'm going to say double click that to rename it and I'm going to call this one back underscore ref underscore L for layer. And now this is really cool because at any time I can hide these or unhide these and you guys, for a car, it's very complex object. You're going to end up with at least 20 distinct shapes or models. 
to, to build the car. And so it's important for you at an early stage to use the, uh, the layer editor and organize your scene so that you can keep everything kind of separated. And I'm sure you guys learned that when you started building the environment after a while. Um, if you didn't have everything organized, it got a little uh, cumbersome. So I try to do that early and often. Now that I have the, my layers created, I'm going to go ahead and save the scene. So I'll do save scene as. And I need to save this to a different folder. So I'm going to save it to my desktop into that same temp folder that I created. And I'm going to call this Bronco FA1201 and save it. And for good measure, I always save it twice right off the bat just in case it gets corrupted or something. And I'm going to save it again as two. So I have two of the same files, and you guys have already learned how that's valuable as well. Okay, so we're set up and ready to go. And there's a number of ways that you can model this. Uh, I'm going to show you the dominant workflow. So we've already covered box modeling, so we've kind of been there, done that. And I want to introduce you to another concept. Uh, this one is called edge flow modeling. And what edge flow modeling does is it attempts to assign edges to the geometry you're about to build based on where the details are and where the edges need to flow in order to define uh, those details. So the cool thing about edge flow is that if you start out with a photograph or even uh, a sketch or anything, you can bring the image into Photoshop, which I'm going to go ahead and do. So I'm going to pop back over to Photoshop. And you can plan out your mesh in Photoshop before you ever build your mesh. Okay? So I want to go ahead and do that. So if we look at this car, the first thing we want to do is break it down into separate objects. All right? So I've already said in this class that if it is a separate object in real life, then it should be modeled as a separate object in your CG scene. So based upon that, is this door hinge, is that a separate object? Yes. Is this side view mirror a separate object? What about this quarter panel here for the front? Is that a separate object? Yes. And it breaks right here. So you want to look on your car for things like breaks. If it's got a break there, that means that that quarter panel ends there and then a new, new part shows up. And when you see those breaks, you don't want to ignore those. You want to actually model those in. That's going to make your car look more photoreal is those little details. And if you modeled this all out of one consistent box, uh, it would be much harder to uh, basically model those kinds of details into the model. So again, the door would be a separate object. What about this little piece up here? Separate object, right? Mm -hmm. The windshield, separate object. Just the frame, and it, and it looks like this portion here is also separate object. Uh, this little piece right here, separate. See the lines? This thing up here, separate lines, okay? Fenders, separate, separate pieces. Okay, so now I want to break down what, we have all these separate objects on the side of the vehicle, and I want to pick one to start with. What I usually do is I start with kind of the most complicated or the most dominant, the largest section of the car. So this quarter panel starts here and it ends here, so that's kind of big. Uh, the door is maybe not that big, but look at this panel. It starts here. That's the break. It goes over here. There's no breaks, no breaks, no breaks, all the way back down. Still no break, and then all the way around the back. And then if I pop over to the back view, I can confirm. I don't see any breaks until I get right over here at the very back end. So this is probably the largest section of the car that's one consistent piece. So that's the one I'm going to start with, okay? Now I need to start planning out the shape. Does this section, I'm going to start right here because that's where it starts. Does that section look like it's completely flat? It kind of curves under, correct? Okay, so now I want to plan out how many edges I'm going to need to define that curvature of that shape. So I'm going to create a new layer above here. I'm going to use my obnoxious red paint still. Say okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab a paintbrush again. I'm going to reduce the size of the brush a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw this line first. I'm going to go, I need how many edges? One, two, three, 
4 to define that curve. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw this feature, this curvature, goes how far into the future so of this panel. It goes from here. It looks like it just goes all the way straight across. So I'm going to hold down my shift key to draw that line. And then I've already decided that I needed four edges, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw those four edges. And if I hold down the shift key, I can basically draw a straight line across after I do my, whoops, my first click. And so I'm just drawing those four edges. And now I can go ahead and connect those. Does this look familiar to anyone? I've got four edges. What else has four edges? A, po a polygon? You are correct. So what am I doing right here? You're basically choosing what shapes you're going to use. I'm creating, yeah, I'm planning out my polygons before I ever construct them. Because one of the hardest things about doing a hard surface object is getting your edges in the right place to define the feature. All right, so w that's why we're doing the heavy lifting right now. Okay, so I've defined this shape. That's the first shape. Now we have this detail here. So I'm probably going to need what? One, two, three, four edges there as well. So one of these I'm going to just bring straight down like so. This one I'm going to bring up. And then this one, I haven't decided what I'm going to do, but I'm going to connect these guys. And then this one can come straight over like so. And then this one I'm going to just go ahead and connect. Now i got to figure out where to route these guys. So uh, I think I'm probably just going to route these straight over for now. So that's essentially what my edge flow looks like for that piece of the, the quarter panel. And now I'm going to go ahead and draw straight up. So from here to here, it's basically flat, right? From here to here, it's basically flat until we get to here. Well, now we have another curvature. I'm probably going to need an edge here, an edge here, and an edge here to define that shape. So in this one, I'm probably this is a slight curve. It's not really that pronounced, but I'm going to go ahead and do an edge here, here, and here. And then I've got this long pronounced edge here, which is a hard edge. And this thing goes from here all the way over to here. And then I got a curvature, so I'm going to figure out how many edges I need. One, two, three, four to define that. And then it goes down straight. And then we've got this shape here. That looks like that curves, just like this piece over here, right? And if I look at the back view, we can confirm that if I turn off the side. This is basically this section here where it curves and then goes under the car. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to figure this one out. So in order to get that bend, I'm going to need one, two, three. It's probably good. And I'm going to need one, two, three here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those in there too. So boom, boom, and boom. And then now I can connect these guys. I can't really tell what happens after this. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, actually I'm going to I think I know what happens because I've already figured it out. I'm going to drop that one straight down. I think that this bevel just continues. All right. Okay. And then so I'm going to draw this one up to here until what I need. Same thing as on the other side. One, two, three, four. And now I need to connect all these guys up. So this one's straight, so I can just draw that straight across. And i got to route all of these somewhere. So I think this one I'm going to just take up to the top. This one I'm going to take all the way over. This one can go straight up to the top. And then i got to figure out where I'm going to route these guys. So I've got one. That one's pretty flat. And then for these, I got one, two, three. And let's see where I can position those. Let's go to here, here, here. Oh, that's a thing of beauty. 
So what I'm also trying to do here is, you've heard me talk about it uh, in class, that you're always trying to remain in quads for everything if you can. There's sometimes when the shape will just take a turn or there's really no other solution but to put a triangle in there. And when that happens, you have no solution other than to use a triangle. But in this case, I'm basically planning out this mesh so that I have quads for everything. So there's only four edges, four-sided edges for all this. This is like the holy grail for modeling. All right, so that's good. I'm going to connect this one to this one to this one. And now i got to route those. So i got this edge to here. i got this one to here. And that one to there. Does that work? That works. And this one, I'm just going to continue on. And then these guys have to go somewhere. I'm not quite sure what happens up here at the top, so I'm just going to drop this down like that and call it A, because I'm going to have to go to the other side to figure out the rest. And so I think I'm just going to route these up like this. Same thing. There. Okay, do you guys accept that? I think that's going to work. Now, I would have to worry about these shapes here if the side of the body panel had any curvature to it. And what I'd probably have to do is I'd have to route these more flat rather than out to the edges. But due to the fact that this is pretty much a planar uh, object, I can route these in kind of a, work, a, a way that's transverse uh, to the um, actual geometry. All right. So, do, 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 do. just as I said, that I know that I'm going to have a problem with this because I'm going to need to add extra edges on either side of this line. And this guy right here is going to cause me problems. So I'm going to reroute this. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. And I'm going to paint this one up here and I'm going to bring this one over this one over and this one over yeah that's going to work okay now that I have this thing planned out I'm going to hold down control shift and S to save a copy and I'm going to save it again as a JPEG this time I'm going to call it side ref text, but I'm going to insert edge flow in there. Say OK. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over into Maya, and I'm going to hit Control D when I'm selecting the side panel, and I'm going to move it out. And I'm also going to move it out so that it intersects my front reference plane at about the same point where that side body panel starts. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this plane live. Does anyone know what that does? It basically makes it so you can draw on it. So whatever you draw on it to create it, I'm going to reference the rest of these so I can't select them. And now if I go ahead and go into the Create CV Curve tool or anything, see how it's going to draw right onto that plane? which is perfectly where I want that uh, geometry to be. All right? But I'm not going to use the CV curve tool for this. And I need to assign a new texture map to this guy. So I'm going to unfreeze it for a second. And now I want to right click on this and I need to assign a new material. So I'm going to say assign new material, Lambert. And I'm going to rename this to um, side, ref, edge, underscore text. Copy that name. Click on the color because I want to map the color file to this. I'm going to rename this Oops. to side ref edge color. And then I'm going to map that edge flow diagram that I just made onto it. All right. And then now I'm going to go ahead and make this guy live. 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to enter into the Polygon toolset. And I'm going to go into the uh, mesh commands. And I'm looking for the Create Polygon tool. And what this is going to allow me to do is I'm going to pop over here into the side view. And I'm going to click wherever I have a uh, edge connecting to another edge. And I hit enter, what's that going to do? That's going to create a polygon. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm building the side of my vehicle. But I'm doing it all flat. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct all the polygons. And then I'm later going to pull the points to shape it. Alright, so this, bear with me. I know this is a lot of setup time. But uh, if you do it this way, you will probably get your model done in about a half to a quarter of the time that you would have spent otherwise, I swear. Okay, so we're going to go over here into the front viewport. I've got one of the polygons created. I need to keep creating polygons. So the way the Create Polygon Tools uh, works is it will create a new polygon every time you click the tool. And you just basically have to keep creating polygons on top of each other. So I'm going to turn on the wireframe on Shaded. And then I'm going to hold down the V key, which temporarily snaps to Vertex. And what, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to snap the vertice of the newly the polygon I'm creating onto the one that I've already created. So that when I go to merge these later, they're going to merge uh, without me having to do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and create another polygon here. So I'm going to hold down the V key again to snap to these two verts. And then I'm going to hit enter. Every time you create one, you have to hit enter also in order to complete the creation of the polygon. And then I'm going to hold down the V key again because I want to snap. Release it because I don't want to snap. And then V key because I want to snap. Create polygon tool. V key because I want to snap. V key. No more V key because I don't want to snap. And V key because I want to snap. Hit enter. Create polygon tool. V key because I want to snap to the vertices. No V key because I don't. V key because I want to. And I've got the first uh, bottom section of this quarter panel done. So I'm going to keep going. <coughs> so I'm going to go into the Create Polygon tool again. Hold down the V key. No more V key. V key. Create Polygon tool. V for snap to vertex. No more. No more. V to snap to vertex. Create Polygon Tool, V for Snap to Vertex, no more, and V key. And we're just going to keep on trucking. Okay, keep on going. V. Create uh, V. One more V and V create vertex snap, no more vertex snap. Create V for snap to vertex, no more V again. Now you can also hit the G key to repeat your last command. So I've been going over here and clicking the Create Polygon tool under the late, most recent tool. I could also just hit the G key and that would do the exact same thing. It would enter me into my most recent command. So then I'm going to hold down the V key again, snap to the vertices that I have, and then release to not G now. I'm going to, instead of hitting that, I'm just going to hit the G. Hold down the V key to snap to vertex. Release it. V to snap again. Uh, v to snap to vertex. Release to not. G key for a repeat last command, which is create polygon tool. I'm going to hold down the V key for snap to vertex. Release it because I don't have one to snap to. Enter. V key. Snap to vertex, release because I don't have one, and V key again, and V key for snap to vertex, release because I don't have one, and V again to snap, V key again to snap, snap, release, snap again, 
and then v for snap. V, V, release. V, V, release. V, again, release. And I'm almost done. Just four more polygons to create. So V, V key again. V release. V again. And V release. And V again. Okay. So I've got my polygons built here. We can actually see that. At this point, I can click on the live button. And I can hide um, this layer after I create a new layer for it, or I've already done that. I want to rename this one side edge underscore L for edge flow. And then I'm going to go ahead and hide that. And so we have a shape here, and by, uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to just hide all the layers because I don't need them anymore. And I actually have some geometry. And if I turn on the wireframe on shaded, we can see here that we have that same edge flow that I just drew in Photoshop. And what I need to do now is I need to check the normals on these because when you use the Create Polygon tool, it basically will orient the normal on, on the direction that you click to create the polygon. So if I click here, here, and here clockwise, it'll shoot the normal either facing forward or backward. And if I go counterclockwise, it'll make the normal face the opposite direction. So I wasn't totally careful about my clicking, and I don't know. I probably got some of these facing the wrong way. So I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to go to Display. I want to make some custom tools here, so I'm going to go to my Custom Shelf. And I'm going to hold down the Shift and Control key, and I want to make a button to show my normals. So I'm going to go to Display, Polygons, Face Normals. And then I can select my geometry and click Face Normals. And all I want to do is make sure they're all facing the same way. And if I look here, I got one that's facing the wrong way, so I did pretty good except for that one. So I'm going to select that polygon, and I'm going to go to Normals, and I'm going to say Reverse. Now they're all facing the same direction. So I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to say Mesh Combine, and see they're all facing the same way. Uh, I do want to reverse those so they're facing towards the camera, so I'm going to say Reverse. And then I want to hide them. And then now I'm going to go into vertex mode and I'm going to select all my vertices and I'm going to merge them. So I'm going to go into edit mesh, merge, and I want to put a very small value on here, like a 0 0.01, because I was very careful when I created these to make sure that they were all overlapping. And so I know that they're going to go ahead and merge uh, if I just use a small value and hit merge. So now that all my vertices are welded, I can go ahead and delete the history on this object. Let's see how we're starting to get a pretty decent amount of history accumulated on this thing. From time to time when you're poly modeling, as you guys know, it's uh, worthwhile to delete the history on your object. So I'm going to go to Edit, Delete by Type, History, and I'm going to hold down the Control Shift key to make a button for that so that every time I want to do it, all i got to do is select the object and hit Delete History. And now our object is nice and clean. And now I can start shaping this. So I'm going to go in here into vertex mode. And I'm just going to start kind of flattening things out a little bit. I'm going to go into the side orthographic viewport. And when I drew these, um, I was using an image that had perspective on it. And I don't believe on the actual production car that uh, these vertices here aren't planar. So I want to make them planar, and I'm going to do that by selecting them and hit the R key for scale. And I'm going to make these planar by just kind of scaling them down until they all line up top and bottom. And then I don't really need to do that for the side ones, but now I need to bend the shape in that the car actually has. So that car kind of has a shape where it curls under. And so I'm going to select these and move them. Deselect, move, Oops. deselect, and move. And I just want to get that curvature 
to that body panel. And when I'm designing this, uh, the whole time I'm, I'm building this, I'm planning on later smoothing this geometry out. So from time to time I'm going to hit the three key to check it under the NERMS smooth preview to just see how it looks. And so I'll go ahead and accept that shape. That looks pretty good actually. And I'm going to hit the one key to get back out of the NERMS preview. And then now I'm going to go ahead and figure out what happens here. So we had that side body panel. And I'm probably going to have to go look at one of my like three quarter views for this. So I'm going to go back out here to my reference images, which are on the desktop. And um, let's see if I can find like a three quarter view. Here we go. Okay, it looks like this panel here kind of does this little bevel trick. Uh, for all these points that are above and beyond. And so I'm going to go ahead and go into vertex mode and I'm going to select all these points. And I'm just going to go ahead and bevel those in like that. That's about how it does it, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and select these guys and we're going to have to figure out what happens to those. So here I can go ahead and consult my back plane, back reference plane. And from time to time, it's going to be useful for you to grab these planes and move them so that you can see in front of whatever it is you're doing. And so in this case, I want to grab this, and I might want to do this in orthographic viewport. Vertex mode. I'm going to grab these vertices, and I'm going to pull them in because they basically make up this shape here. And then these guys make a little curvature which I could probably just do by just doing this. Something like that, right? And then now, let's go ahead and check and see how we did. So it's starting to look like something, right? And if I hit the three key, I can see what it's going to look like smooth. Okay, now I want to address, let's say that we're willing to accept that, and that's good. I want to address this little line here. So see this little line that we have going all the way around? And if we look at the, the perspective reference, see that how that kind of becomes like a hard edge there? all the way around. Check this out. This is all we're going to need to do. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the edges up here and I'm just going to extrude those back. So I'm going to say Edit Mesh Extrude. I'm going to change this to World Mode. So remember what I said, the difference between World Mode and Local Mode? World Mode is consistent with the axis line here in the perspective view. Local Mode actually uses the face normals on the object to transform the mesh. So it's going to just transform that off into the distance. Most of the time when I'm doing hard surface modeling, I'm going to want to click that little icon there, which looks like a little power button. And that's going to switch me into world mode and I'm just going to extrude those back a little bit. All right. So we've got that quarter panel uh, almost done. But I want to show you how we're going to address that little uh, kind of detailed line that, that uh, runs along the extremity. Now because we did this as an edge flow modeling method and we have that line flowing exactly where that hard line is on that panel, look how easy this is for us to add that hard edge to the model. We're going to go into object mode. I'm going to go to edit mesh and I'm going to say insert edge loop tool and I'm just going to go boom and boom and then now look what happens when I smooth it. We have that nice hard edge running all the way down the seam. Pretty awesome, huh? So in just a matter of minutes, maybe 15 or 20, but still, uh, we have this thing edge flowed out and modeled precisely how it needs to be in order to get the hard surface shape that we need with the final mesh, all right? Now, if you wanted to tighten things up, so see how this line is kind of straying off from the other one? I want to introduce you to it. I've shown you this tool before, but I'll show you again. 
we can select these edges here, the ones that are kind of farther apart than these other ones. And we're going to use a tool in here under Edit Mesh called Slide Edge Tool. And then you, you select the edges you want to slide and then you use your middle mouse and you can just kind of drag it up. And you, what, you can slide these in to be close. So now the next thing I want to do is now I have this panel modeled and I've taken special care to um, have it all be precisely shaped to the vehicle. So I'm going to select all these edges. And now I'm going to go ahead and go into Modify. And I'm going to say Convert Polygon Edges to Curve. And I'm going to do a Linear. I'm going to say Apply. And I have this Polygon Curve here, which I can move off because I want to create a gap for my door panel. And then I can duplicate this curve again. And now I can select both of those curves and go into Surfaces and say Loft. And I want to make a poly object out of those, and I want to do it as quads, and I want to do it as control points, and I'm going to say apply. And so what this did was it basically created this shape with the identical number of edges that it did on this one, which is exactly what we need for the door. And then it added too many edges here, so I'm going to go ahead and clean these up. I'm going to select all of these edges and all of these edges, and I'm going to say um, go into polygon. I'm going to say Edit Mesh, Delete Edge plus Vertex. And now I can grab all these vertices here. First of all, I can move these up because I want to create a slight gap between the panels. But then I can grab all of these guys at the front of the door here. And I can go ahead and move those forward and use my R for scale and I can flatten those out and check it out I already got my door model and it's identical to the body panel that I've already made okay so then what I can do here is if I want to mirror these panels across all I'm going to have to do because I planned them out in the first place to be uh, across from the origin and their center is perfectly on the origin. If I want to duplicate those panels across, I'm going to go to Edit, Duplicate Special. And I want to mirror them across the X plane, so I'm going to do a negative one and say Apply. And there we go. And that's how you're going to get the other side of your vehicle. So cars are always symmetrical for the most part. And so you're only going to have to model one side, which makes it go pretty fast. I've only been modeling this for about 10 minutes, and, uh, or 15 minutes, and already I have uh, almost a, a quarter of the vehicle actually built. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay, so uh, now that we've got some of the body panels modeled here, and they're extremely optimized, and they're also retaining the shape of the uh, car, let's uh, do the fender here. So. Uh, this car has kind of these pronounced fenders here, and they look like they just extrude all the way around the side, and it's kind of a uniform shape. So this is super easy if you end up having a fender like this, or let's say you want to do like a customized like ground effects kit on your car. I'm going to go into edge mode here. If you select uh, one of the edges and then you control shift and double click, the edge on the other side, it'll select all the edges in between. It's kind of nice. Okay, now that I've done that, you can imagine I'm probably going to go to Modify, Convert, Polygon Edges to Curve here. And now that I have a curve, all I need to do is draw a shape for that fender shape. And then I'm just going to extrude it around there. So the first thing I want to do with my curve is I want to find out where this curve starts and begins. And I'm going to do that by going into Control Vertex Mode. And remember, as I told you guys before, the curve always starts where this box is and then where the U follows behind it. So that's my curve direction. It starts at the box and then it flows off in U. So what I want to do is I want to go into the view that is perpendicular to that curve, which is right here. And now I want to draw my fender shape. Okay, so I'm going to draw that fender shape out.
and it may not be perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and center the pivot on the shape. So I'm going to say modify center pivot. And then I'm going to snap the pivot so that it originates at the beginning of that line. And then now it's also a good idea to start making layers for your body panels as well. And I'm going to go ahead and create a layer for these. I'm just going to call it for now body panels. And I want to snap this curve to this line. So I'm going to select the curve and then I'm going to select the shape. And I'm going to say um, surfaces, surfaces, extrude. I'm going to do tube, at path, component, profile normal, polygons. Um, output type quads and then I want to use control points and I'm going to say apply and then check it out we've got our fender here it may need to be rotated some and scaled some also and if I go to body panels check that out And the cool thing about these is you can adjust it. So if you wanted to bring in the side ref image and see if it matched up, I could go in here and go into x-ray. And you could totally adjust this interactively. Line that right up with the reference. I actually did a pretty good job just by guessing. That's why I had a, such a long pause. I was thinking it all through in my head before I did it. Okay, so there we got the fender. Pretty awesome. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I think we'll first just do uh, this one. So it's kind of hard to edge flow this one, this uh, windshield pane, because we don't really have a whole lot of information about that. And also because we can probably just go ahead and do this uh, using a box model. So in this case, for the windshield, uh, because it's kind of simple, I'm just going to go ahead and I believe start with uh, a box. So I'm going to go over here into the top viewport. And this looks like my windshield starts at just in front of the door. So I'm going to go ahead and create a polygon primitive. I'll do a cube. I'm going to make it about the same width as uh, the door top section. And then I'm going to extrude it up. And then now I want to position this thing into place. So at the base of my door pane. And then I'm going to go ahead and scale this thing down a little bit. I'm going to change the insert to be at the base. And then there we go. All right, so now I'm going to go into vertex mode. And I'm just going to tilt this to line up with that. That's my windshield. And then we want to, let's just model this um, in the side view first, and then we'll go over into the front view and figure out how to distort it. So I'm going to go into face mode. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude this up. And we want to keep everything very simple uh, right now, guys. So you want to kind of do the minimum amount of polygons you need to define the shape. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and extrude this up one time. So I'm going to say Edit Mesh Extrude. I'm going to go into World Mode. So I can just move this up. I'm going to put this about center on the glass there. And then I'm going to hit the G key to extrude it one more time and put it right about there and then what I want to do is I want to go and take a peek from the front reference plane and I want to consult how much that angles in on the, the windshield and also the thickness because I may have gotten that wrong as well to begin with so I'm going to hit the 6 key in the front viewport
And I don't know why that's not showing up. Strange. Okay. Um, and I want to move this so that I can actually see my windshield shape. So you just have to keep moving those viewplanes in and out. And I definitely see I got the thickness way off. So I'm going to make the thickness correct here. And this isn't lining up perfect, but that's okay. Uh, it's At a certain point, it's all going to stop lining up. And you're just going to have to make decisions. So I'm going to cheat this in based on the angle here. And then we have this shape here where it starts to curve up and over. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate these vertices to start to get that going. And then I'm going to go over here into face mode. Face mode, I said. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and extrude this. And I'm going to pop into my front ortho. I'm going to pull that up. I don't like to rely on these manipulator handles. You guys might like to. I don't. So um, I'm going to go into vertex mode and I'm just going to select these and rotate them. Like so. And then I'm going to go into uh, face mode again. I'm getting some weird stuff going on here. All right, face mode again, and I'm going to go ahead and extrude, turn on my front ref. Immediately, I'm going to go to vertex mode, because I, I just don't like using those manipulators. They've caused me uh, issues before. Rotate that down, and then I'm going to go into face mode again. And I'm going to extrude one more time. Yeah, I don't like that thing. Vertex. Okay. And before we do anything, I want to address this shape here with reference to the side view and see how I completely lost track of the pitch and I need to model that back in I'm going to flatten these four and these behind. Okay. And then now I can go into face mode. Uh huh. Yeah, go for it. And now I'm going to go ahead and extrude this one more time. And you guys see how this works? You're just constantly popping back and forth. And then we hit the G key again to extrude one more time. And then you're going to want to just find that center line, which I'm approximately at. And so I know that I'm kind of done here. 
I'm going to go into vertex mode. And my center line is actually at my origin, so I'm going to move these guys straight up there. Hit the scale key to flatten those. Oops. And I've got uh, that one down. Okay, so now let's look at what happens in the top viewport from this shape here this is kind of a quarter panel of so it's not a quarter panel it's a panel and it looks like it just kind of comes up and over and then there's another panel that holds the sunroof so I can totally make this shape by just extruding right off of uh, my existing faces it looks like if I'm correct here. Maybe I need to add one more edge loop. Or I need to go ahead and grab these vertices and just flatten them out. That actually worked. So I'm going to go into face mode here. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate these faces because I don't want to extract them. So I'm going to go ahead and say edit mesh, duplicate face, and I want to separate the duplicate faces. So I'm going to say OK. I don't want to, with this tool, it's very kind of leery to, to uh, use that manipulator. Let's scale that down. So the first thing I always do is just click on. Um, actually, I just click away from it and then click it again to select it. Go into object mode, select the polygon, and say modify center pivot. And I'm just going to move that off to give myself a little bit of a gap between. And then I'm going to go into face mode again. And what do you think I'm going to do? Extrude. And then I'm going to go into vertex mode, and I'm going to scale these down. Oops. That's what I was looking for. Okay. I'm going to scale these down to flatten them out. And then we could just keep going. I can grab this one if I look at it from the top view. Kind of comes up on that exact same plane with the break. So I think I could just reuse this piece right here. And go in here to face mode. Select all these guys. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to say edit mesh. Uh, duplicate face. I'm just going to click off of it and then select it again and then I'm going to go ahead and grab all these vertices I'm going to hit the R key for scale and I'm going to flatten these out I'm going to actually end up flattening the vertices one at a time so what I have to do is I have to select one side scale it flat move it set the other side scale it flat and now I can scale the whole thing how much, how much time do we have left? okay I'm going to keep going. Okay, 
And then again, if we ever want to duplicate this, we're going to go to Edit, Duplicate Special. Uh, at a certain point, you're going to have to group them. So I'm going to select them all and do Control-G for group. And then I say Edit, Duplicate Special. And then now, see, it'll mirror directly across. For things like this, so these little extrusions, those are kind of... Um, you plan these out ahead of time. So this shape can basically be derived from this one. So let's, I want to do this. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this shape. We're going to face mode here. And I'm going to grab that piece. And I'm going to say edit mesh. Uh, where is it? Duplicate face. Click off of it. Click on it again move this over and then now the main difference between if I look at my reference and I'm going to center the pivot on this thing modify center pivot I'm going to make a button for that because that happens a lot so center pivot and then now I'm going to create my gap here you always want to keep your gaps the same at all your body panels maintain that tolerance and then this one if I look at it from the top view though it has a different length it stop that one stops here this one extrudes more in so I need to go ahead and do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edge mode I'm going to select all four of these edges first and I'm going to say uh, mesh fill hole just to cap that again I can do the same thing on the bottom and then what I want to do is I want to go into face mode here and I want to extrude this in to basically represent that same distance that that thing goes in. So I'm going to say Edit Mesh, Extrude. I want to snap to World Mode because I believe it just goes straight across. Something like that. If I wanted to, I can go into Vertex Mode and scale these to flatten those out to get rid of that angle. And then I'm going to match the inclination of the roof on this just a little bit just for because I think that's probably how it would be built you want to build everything with the minimum number of edges that you need in order to define the shape and then we're going to add the detail as we go so and that really is going to end up kind of in the last week of this project is when you're going to add um, all the the extra added details 90% of the vehicle is just getting the form roughed out in the beginning and having it be in the right place Plus, if you guys keep your meshes very simple like this, when you come in to, uh, next week, I'll be able to look at them and make edits very fast. So, like, based on, you know, if there's a portion that's off or whatnot, we're going to be able to change that really quickly.